Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be doing a project that's been done probably a million times. I'm making a light box, but what I'm doing different with my light, light box is I'm putting my logo from a PNG file right on the diffuser surface, and I'm going to have it on both sides. So this here is basically my frame, and I will have my logo on this side and also on this. It will mount to the wall with these brackets, so it, it doesn't mount this way. It'll actually mount perpendicular to the wall. On the inside, I'll be putting these LED strip lights. Now, what I want to do that makes this different is I want my logo to be flush with the surface. So I'm going to take my PNG file. I'm going to convert that so it's usable into my slicer, Creality 6.2. Uh, I want the surface, like I said, I want it flush, much like I have here on this box, like I did with my maker chips. In fact, you can do both sides and i also did it on my pcb way dragster for 3d printopia speaking of pcb way i want to thank them for sponsoring today's video got a great idea let pcbway.com help bring it to life with fast high quality 3d printing services it's as easy as uploading your design file use from a wide range of premium and exotic filaments and just like that your vision becomes reality. Visit the PCBWay.com website and prototype the easy way with PCBWay.com. Okay, let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is convert my PNG logo into something usable like an SVG. I happen to use an online converter, uh, Convertio. I'll leave a link in the description. Let's get started. It's real simple. We're going to choose our files. I'm going to go over to where our logo is right there. We'll open that up. And as you can see, it's a PNG file. And I'm going to select SVG so it's compatible with Creality Print. So we'll click on SVG. I'll hit Convert. And just like that, it's done. Now, be careful when you're downloading. Do not download from here or here. They take you to other applications. The download you want is right here, the blue blue one. Go ahead and click on that, and we're going to save it. Save it somewhere where you can find it. I'm going right to my downloads folder, and we'll save it there. Let's jump into Creality Print and bring this in. Okay, I'm in Creality Print 6.2. I'm going to be using my Creality High Combo, and I will be printing on a smooth PEI plate. First thing I want to do is show you two different things with the logo, the converted SVG file. The first one is when you bring that in, if I go up to File and Import, and I import it just like any other STL, we're going, okay, and it took a little while, and it's going to ask us if we want to scale automatically. It's too big, so let's go ahead and hit Yes, and we'll stick with that. Now, what I want to show you interesting about this is if we come over here, to the left side currently up here at the top it says we're on global mode we go to objects okay and we click on objects all of these are individual items so if we right click on that item there start changing the colors see how it's just changing the, those particular colors this is great if you have uh, a lot of different colors to your logo now, I want to show you the other method. It gives us a different result. So let's say new project again. I'm not going to save that. This time, what I'm going to do is drag and drop my logo into the slate. So I'm just dragging my SVG file in. And it came out too big. Not a big deal. We just scale that. We had the same problem before. Go ahead. We scale it. And there we are. Okay, but what's interesting about this is we only have one item. So if you got a single color logo, uh, this works great for you. This is the method I'm going to be using in this one, only because I only have one color. Um, I could actually go ahead and I could print this right now. 
but none of it's going to stay together because I got these dots out here, the inside, all the letters are going to fall apart. I don't want that. I want it all to be together on a diffuser uh, lens. But let's go ahead and I'm going to start the whole process on putting it on one. Let's go new project, not saving that. Now, I have a diffuser drawn up in Fusion 360, but their servers are down and I cannot access it. So I'm going to make one up real quick here. I'm using a cylinder. I'm going to change the scale. I'm going to change the diameter on this to 237 in the X and Y. I'm going to turn off uniform scale. I'm going to make this two millimeters tall. And that's all there is to that. So I have a diffuser to work with. Um, off to the side what you can do next is just right click on it and hit center by default it should be centered on the bed plate um, if it's not just go ahead and center it that way but now i'm going to drag and drop my logo in and like before it's way too big i'm going to change the scale i want to make sure i turn my uniform scale back on but now here's the kicker you notice that everything's underneath the cylinder. Otherwise, there would be an eyeball next to the pushing plastic logo. Now, I'm okay to go ahead and scale this right now without affecting the cylinder. And that's what I'm going to do. But there's an important step you need to do here. And it only happens when you're doing it uh, by dragging and dropping. you got to come over here. and You're going to want to click the cylinder actually right click on the cylinder over here your object mode uh the one with the eyeball and you're going to go split the objects okay so now we still have the logo as one object and the cylinder as a separate object so i can turn the cylinder off visibility and as you can see we have the shadow for it still there um but you can we can work with our logo so i'm going to click the logo and I'm going to center it, just like we did before. It doesn't look too bad. I'm going to change my scale. I'm going to leave my uniform scale turned on. Start stretching this up just a little bit. I don't want to go too far because I actually have a little bit of material on my uh, a frame for this. Let's go ahead and I'm going to move it a little bit over this way. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to change the color of that. I could do this way we always do it by right clicking on it over here. Or you can just come over here on the side, pushing plastic logo on the left, have uh, the white oval here with the number one in it that's telling a slot one with the white filament i want to use slot two on the cfs for the blue filament so there we go and i'm going to get this out of the way purge tower okay so the next thing i want to do is i'm going to come over here in object uh the object label select the logo and i'm going to flip this 180 degrees so it's upside down the reason i do that is that's this going to be the surface that's hitting the bed plate and that's going to give me a better looking print at the finish because this, this will be the visible size okay so we're almost there what i'm going to do is turn on the cylinder again we have everything turned on what we got to do now is combine those objects we can just hit Control a from the keyboard and that selects everything um we can click on the cylinder and hold the shift key and click on the pushing plastic logo that selects everything if we had a list of things here we could click on the top one go all the way to the bottom and click it and that would select everything in between but we got it all now and with having them all selected we're going to right click and we're going to hit assemble and there it is and of course my luck it didn't work why is that? So I'm going to undo that. Might be thickness. That looks pretty good there. Pushing plastic logo. Uh, I'm going to change that thickness to one millimeter. 
and do that because they still have uniform scale. And now I'm going to change it to one millimeter. All right now, there we go. My uh, logo is a little too thin. Let's go ahead and we're going to slice this and take a look at it. Kind of from the bottom. See it there. Go down through my layers. A little thinner than I thought it would be. Ah, okay. That's why I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing line type. There we go. I wasn't seeing my uh, infill. There we go. So the first time you come in here and do this, you're probably going to actually get it in line type mode. If you want to see it in the full color, just go to switch over to filament mode over here on the left. Down under G. Let's go ahead and print this out and see what it comes out, comes out like. That came out pretty good. I, I'm I'm happy with the results. It's a nice flush surface. Now, what I did use was Polymaker Panachroma Army Blue, it's called, for my logo. And the white is their cotton white. And it is very smooth on here. Everything came out great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'll assemble this and we'll see you on the other side. Came out pretty good. I like the look of that. Uh, what it would do is mount to the wall like this. And I'll end up wire tying uh, the cord to one of the, the posts. Now, I used the 3D Gloop to assemble this. It assembled in about five minutes or less. Um, I was originally going to use CA glue. Either one would work. CA glue, crazy glue, which is CA glue, actually. Uh, the gloop, I had gloop on hand, so I, I do like the gloop. It dries quick. It uh, doesn't make a big mess. I'm not sponsored by them. But, hey, gloop, if you're watching, hey, here I am. Um, but I like the way it came out. And one other thing I do want to mention is I said about uh, the Polymaker filament. The frame itself is Elegoo Charcoal Black, and I like the way that printed. Uh, I did use a 0.4 millimeter and a 0.2 layer height, and it came out smooth. I'm going to light this up. We'll see if you can see it with the room lights on or not. Yeah, you might be able to. It's, uh, it's all right. I probably could have used brighter lights. I picked a set of LEDs I had laying around. Uh, they wrap around one and a half times on the inside. Uh, I'll put a link to the ones I use down in the description. Another thing you could do if this isn't bright enough for you, you could actually go ahead and make your diffuser a little bit thinner than what I did. Um, don't be afraid to experiment with this stuff. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.